affirming congregation, which means that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Announcements this morning. There are two cards in your pews. Uh, one is for prayer requests and one is a welcome card. Uh, you can fill out either, <laughs> either or both as needed and put it in the offering plate. And certainly anybody is welcome to use that prayer card if you have something that uh, you feel moved to say but don't want to say out loud, don't feel comfortable saying out loud or anything like that. Um, we encourage you to use those prayer cards. Um, contrary to what you've seen in the bulletin and the EDCC, youth group is not meeting today as planned. They will meet next Sunday, May 19th, after confirmation class from 12 to 1.30 p.m. here at the church. There will be a spring salad bar lunch, and you can feel free to bring a dessert if you, to share if you'd like for the youth group. The Super Sandwich Sock Hop fundraiser has been rescheduled for June 1st. Tickets are available from stewardship committee members. Um, and I think in the great room as well, right? I see um, tickets being waved in the air over there. Will you all be in the great room also to connect after? Um, so, yes, yeah, so you can um, see them there as well. Uh, the second part, last week we had an amazing um, showcase from the Reaching Out team. It was fantastic. You guys did a great job at Coffee Hour um, showcasing all of our um, different missions opportunities. Um, and the second part of that showcase will be next Sunday, May 19th, where you will be able to see displays from the Discipling, Stewardship, and Worship Deacons and uh, their teams. So we will have displays in the great room, and it'll be an opportunity to mo learn more about those different areas, what we do, and um, how they might speak to you. Also next Sunday, May 19th, what a busy week we have, is going to be a pop-up choir. So if you would like to sing in the pop-up choir, there's no tryouts, no callbacks, none of that. If you just feel moved to sing, if you have never sung uh, in front of people before, you are welcome to join in this pop-up choir. All you have to do is show up and meet right here at 8 a.m. next week. That is it. And try it out. And uh, if you're seasoned singer, great. A anybody is welcome. Um, Manchester Pride is going to be held on Saturday, June 15th. Um, if you're interested in participating, I've heard from a bunch of you, um, but we still have space for signing up. Um, see me and let me know your t-shirt size because we would like to provide you with a t-shirt so we all have um, some matching t-shirts to wear. The exact times of signups will come out um, soon, uh, but we really want to get your t-shirt size so we can get that going. And um, we are working on having our nursery open every week. If you are interested in stepping into the nursery with us, please let me know. Um, if you've already been background checked, um, great. If you haven't been, it's just a quick form so that you will be able to do the, um, to go into um, caring for children of our church, which is a really, really important thing for us to do. All of us as a community of faith is raise up these children together from when they're babies all the way through. And so this is a great opportunity to donate a few of your hours, um, really a year if we have enough of us, right? We'll all take turns. So it's a really, really important job that we need filled. Um, today, Emily Oxnard and Ann Cron will be going up after the children's circle. Um, and then finally, um, we have, we are going to be hearing from Bob Spindell, um, who would like to share an idea that he has for Old Home Day. So I turn it over to you, Bob. <laughs> uh, you can do it. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So we have this new idea that came out of the men's breakfast group. Um, most of you know that on the third Saturday of each month of the men's breakfast get together and we share in bacon and eggs and all that good stuff and fellowship. And then afterwards we go into the parlor and we do some kind of study. Uh, this past year we've been studying the Gospel of Luke uh, each month and looking at how uh, Luke suggests uh, Jesus' mission is helping people, serving others and raising people up. 
So this past month, we, had, uh, we were on the last week of Jesus' life, and so it starts off with the, the parade from Palm Sunday. And so uh, the question was asked, what parades have you been involved in, and what was the theme in, of that parade and the values? Either you just saw it or you, you participated in it. We had a really great discussion about that, and that evolved to maybe our church could put a float in the old home days. What kind of theme and what kind of values do we want to share? So we got together and it was so positive. I took the approach that's basic for the, our uh, church here in the organization. So I went to the reaching out deacon and said, well, I have this idea, we'd, we'd like to get the church involved in a float for old, old home days. And she thought it was a great idea and she set me up with the support team and I presented it to them and they think it's a good idea. So now I'm presenting to you, and hopefully you'll think it's a good idea. <laughs> no votes taken. I can't take. I can't take a no. But but here's here's the theme behind this, so to speak. The men's group, we, I think it was going to be a, a catalyst for helping to make it happen. But we want it to be a whole church per, uh, float. That means that everyone can be involved in it in some facet of it. We don't really have a theme yet. Uh, we have some ideas, but we don't have a theme yet, so we'll put together an organizational meeting to come up with the theme and the values and then the design of it, and then we'll, we'll try to get it built, and then obviously for uh, uh, the, uh, it was January 1st, we'll be out in Pasadena going down the Rose Bowl Parade. With that. <clears throat> so we don't, we don't want to use flowers because they won't last that long, so we'll try something else. But uh, so everybody can get involved in it and showcase our church and how we interact with the community. So it's all about serving and helping others and reaching out. So uh, hope you get involved in it. In the next couple of weeks, there'll be a notice when we have our first organizational meeting. Uh, the parade's in the, like the third week in August. So we really want to have the design done by the 1st of July so we can begin building it and working on it and figure out how we're going to do it. So. Uh, Hope you get involved and look out for that announcement. Thank you. Um, I do have something to add, but also, um, Bob, I appreciated that you talked about your process because this really is an illustration of how our church works here is that somebody has an idea and here's how it comes to life. And so Bob had an idea and he brought it to reaching out and on and on it goes and here it is coming together. So if anybody has an idea stirring in your mind, this is a great example of, um, you know, how the support team is here to support you in the life of the church. Um, one more brief thing, um, Marion let me know that on Wednesday um, th from 1 to 4 there's going to be a meeting here at the church for putting together sanitary packages. Uh, men and women, everybody is welcome to join in that. You can ask Marion if you have any questions about that. It's in the EDCC, okay. It just didn't quite make it in the bulletin, so she wanted to make sure that you all heard it. And um, Evelyn so nicely in bright colors wrote this for me and I still missed it. Um, next week is um, Pentecost, sorry. Is ne next week is Pentecost Sunday, so we would love everybody to wear red um, to um, just celebrate Pentecost. So now that is all, okay. So let us uh, breathe deeply and welcome the light of Christ into our sanctuary. Please rise as you are able and join us in our opening hymn.
records down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. Feelings out, hey, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Feel like shouting, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. I feel dancing, Miriam's dance now, since I lay my burdens down. I am dancing, Miriam's dance now, since I lay my burdens down. I am climbing, Jacob's ladder, since I lay my burdens down. I am climbing, Jacob's ladder, since I lay my burdens down. Every round goes higher, higher, since I lay my burdens down. Every round goes higher and higher, since I lay my burdens down. Excellent. That was a, that was a, that was a really good reboot. That was a good reboot. Yeah. It was like, it was like 10.01 last week, I said, we're rebooting that next su Sunday. <laughs> yes, well done, thank you. Please join me in this morning's responsive call to worship. In the midst of our world, where many voices clamor for our attention. We have to hear the voice of Jesus. He has made the name of God known to us, calling us out of the world. As Jesus prayed for his disciples, let us worship in unity, just as Jesus and God are one. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to the time in our worship service when we give ourselves an opportunity to reach out to God amidst God's people with our prayers of concern and celebration. I have a few this morning, and then we'll open it up for others uh, who wish to also raise up prayers. Uh, prayers first for uh, continued prayers for Burton Bush. Is Burton here this morning, Judy, with you? No. Prayer he came home this week, and he has a heart monitor, and he's doing okay. I, I love Judy's pragmatism. She just said, all seems to be okay. All seems to be okay, but uh, he's just being monitored at this point. Continue to keep him in your prayers. Suzanne Steele um, had an update this week on her friend's daughter, Luna, who suffered burns on her foot after an accident on an e-bike. She has been admitted into surgery, uh, had surgery earlier this week, and um, hopefully will not need a second procedure, but that is also in the cards, possibly. Uh, so please continue to pray for Luna and her parents and her medical team as she recovers. Also, a prayer of celebration and also concern for uh, Tim Griffin, who uh, has, God bless him, uh, volunteered, nominated himself, and has been elected as the new moderator for the Rockingham Association. Sandy's not here this morning, so, you know, that's pretty much all of his Sundays for the next three years. Uh, you know, his days will be... Two-year term, so you thought, so you thought. No, no. Um, but yeah, this is, a, I want to raise up a celebration for Tim, but also for this church, uh, because as the scribe for the association, I take attendance at, at installations and ordinations and all these things. And the, one of the corners, maybe the cornerstone of our flavor of Christianity is congregationalism, which means that the clergy are not the clergy that maybe you see on the mo in the movies or read in books. We're not people that stand on pedestals and tell congregations what to do. In fact, the best scenario is that the congregation tells the clergy, this is the color of the room we're gonna paint, you know, this is what we're gonna do. Right? And clergy are really, in our, flavor of tr tr um, in our flavor of Christianity, our partners. We went to school, we learned a lot about God, we learned a lot about the Bible, learned a lot about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and grace and all of these things. 
but all we did was just go to school for a few more years. We need to be partners and to rely on the Holy Spirit. That's something that's been hard for our flavor of Christianity since the pandemic, um, and also it's been a growing trend since prior to the pandemic, where lay leadership, that means people who are not clergy, it's been harder for them to get into a volunteer mode outside of the church, while in, but inside our denomination, our wider denomination, the wider church. And that is something that well, we need to work on, I need to work on, clergy need to work on, is really promoting to lay leaders, hey, we need you. We don't just need you in the church. We need you in the universal church because without you, there is no church. Church is the people. Church is not clergy. Church is the people. Very important. So Tim, God bless him, has decided that he wants to be the moderator for the Rockingham Association for the next two years. And that's really a big time commitment, really big. So I'm thankful for that. And um, well, I'll let him be the model <laughs> for you all for the next couple of years because he's gonna be working a lot. Happy Mother's Day. Wow. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I, I want to read this before I open it up for prayers. Um, I just wrote a little something, a little prayer for, for mothers today. Loving spirit who nurtures the universe, we gather to honor and celebrate the spectrum of motherhood in its biological and adoptive and spiritual forms. We give thanks for the mothers among us and their diverse journeys, for those who have nurtured life within and walked paths of patience and strength. For those who have lost, we hold space in our hearts, recognizing that love and pain are often intertwined. We acknowledge the wisdom of maternal figures who teach compassion and advocate for justice and embody your unconditional love. May we learn from their resilience and be inspired by their courage. In your all-embracing presence, we find solace and support. For single mothers, grandmothers, aunts, guardians, who carry the weight of care with grace and determination, we pray for inclusivity understanding and respect for all expressions of motherhood. For those who choose a different path, we honor their decision. For they too contribute to the richness of our shared human experience. On this day, may we embrace the fullness of love's expression and reflect the nurturing heart of the divine in all that we do and in all that we are. Amen. Are there other prayers of concern or celebration this morning? Yes. Ashley. I just got word that my cousin has thyroid cancer, so her name is Crystal and prayers would be welcome. Thank you, Ashley. I have two this morning. One, thank you um, for helping me with the baby goats because they are a handful, like a lot. And we did very good at basketball game. We did very good at our basketball game. We won one game. I'm 99% sure I left like three minutes early, but we were winning like 14 to 10. So I'm pretty sure we won. Unless my team is really, really bad. But same thing. So, and then we got really <coughs> smoked because they were literally short eighth graders that we were playing. We, we lost like 37 to nothing. Lots of prayers. <laughs> I got that all, Emma. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Marie. I have um, thankfulness for uh, the Dartmouth Hitchcock Hospital up north in Lebanon that 
suggested that they change my daughter's formula, my granddaughter's formula to a amino, amino based formula so she doesn't have to digest the um, proteins in the milk and it seems to have helped with the throwing up and good and she's happy again yes yes gaining nice. weight. good gaining weight gaining weight something we all need to do <laughs> yep that's right you heard it from marie we all have permission to gain weight that's right that's right thank you marie I have a prayer of thanks for all the teachers out there. This past week was National um, Teacher Appreciation Week. Yes. And I'm especially grateful for my career. Um, I've been teaching preschool for 25, four years, something like that. And yesterday I had this whole range of, I went to the Little League opening ceremonies in Pembroke and bumped into one of my current students who didn't recognize me because I had a baseball cap on. <laughs> He's like, you look like my teacher, Jen. <laughs> it's me, yeah. it was my disguise. Right. And then at work at night, I saw a student who was in my class 22 years ago. So it's this like really cool span and That's I just think it's such a blessing yeah. to have this journey that we're on as yeah. teachers. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, Jennifer. Yeah, you should see the expression on people's faces when I'm in the grocery store and I don't have a robe on. Right? They're like, oh, Pastor Kurt, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> Any other prayer requests? Sandy, you have a prayer request? Yes, I do. Wait, wait, wait. Farewell to... I'll repeat it. She's retired. Yes. And I didn't know it till the last minute, and my heart could not go toward Northwood. I had to come home yeah. here this weekend. I just wanted to thank everybody, and um, yeah, I'm building tolerance and patience and everything like that. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Sandy. Thank you for raising Renee, and happy Mother's Day. And thank you for raising Renee up too. Your good ministry in Northwood. So I have a prayer of probably a little bit of a God sighting, I guess. Yep. Um, the, the joy was we as a congregation yesterday um, lifting up the Marquis family, um, Chris and Diane, Marilee. Um, the, the God sighting was that um, Dick had a butterfly tattoo uh, that right. was very important to him, and right. butterflies were a big part of his life. And it just so happened. Holy Spirit, maybe, that our church was exquisitely decorated for Easter with butterflies everywhere. And it just happened that, uh, that we were ready for that yesterday, which was truly a God sighting for me. Yes. Oh, uh, Mar Marion, go ahead. I have that myself and my three siblings were able to travel to Florida right. safely and although it was like oh, hundreds of miles back and forth from one city to the next for the services and everything, but it was so nice that I got to, my sister-in-law, our sister-in-law was so happy that we were able to be there, and we got to meet the rest of James's family, his stepdaughter, stepson, his grandson, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful thing. We're thankful that we were able to do it. I just want to thank um, Pastor Kurt. It was it was an amazing service, and I and Marilee, when I talked to her, she said, she said I have never been, and so many other people said the same thing. They've never been to a more wonderful celebration of oh. life service. Really, oh, it's really credit to them. And again, that's our flavor of Christianity. We get to mm. we get to do things, secular songs, yeah. and all of that yeah. stuff was beautiful. Yeah. Um, I would like to say a prayer for my daughter, Jenny, who has caught this horrible, horrible cold that's going around. And so she is, and probably will be, in bed for a while. Mm. But anyway, she's enjoying Mother's Day that way. Thank you, Ruth. A prayer of thanks for Jenny Menard and all that she does to coordinate um, so many events here at yes. the church.
You know, here's the thing about Jeannie Menard, right? So she has back issues, so she needs to stand in our sanctuary. Unless she's called out, then she sits down, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Jean. Okay. Uh, prayer requests on Zoom this morning. All right, it's good to see you this morning. Let's pray together. With open hearts and minds, being aware of the world around us, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, who found unity with humanity in Christ Jesus, we come before you united in prayer, seeking your presence in the midst of a world that often feels fragmented and troubled. In your wisdom, we pray for our global community as we face the challenges of conflict and strive for peace. We lift up the people of Gaza and Israel as ceasefire talks falter and start again and fears of further violence loom. May your spirit of reconciliation and understanding guide the leaders and bring comfort to those living in fear. In your compassion, we remember the people of Ukraine and Sudan, marking another Easter amidst the ravages of war. May your hope shine through the darkness of conflict, and may the international community work tirelessly for an enduring peace. In your justice, we think of those affected by natural disasters, tornadoes here in the U.S., floods in Brazil and Indonesia, and the heat wave across the South and Southeast Asia. Grant all strength, O Lord and move us to respond with aid and support. In your mercy, we mourn the loss of lives, leaving behind loved ones and legacies. May their loved ones' sorrow find solace and their souls find peace in your eternal embrace. In your love, we celebrate the diversity of your creation and affirm our commitment to being an open and affirming church. We stand with the marginalized, the oppressed, the voiceless, seeking to be a beacon of your inclusive love. In your truth, sanctify us. In your word, guide us. As you sent Jesus into the world, so he has sent us. We ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your grace to face the challenges of our days. And may your love be known through us. We pray this, God, and so much more in your many good and loving names. And in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, so Robbie comes to me this morning and says, walks into my office, and he says, so I want to sing Steal Away this morning. And I said, oh, that sounds wonderful, Robbie. And he's like, well, I think it would be great if you did it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, 
you sound great by yourself. And I'm honored to sing the song with you. So let's do it. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know myself. It's all right. Oh, right, 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 the Zoom folks. That's right. Thank you, Tim. Still away to 
for all the blessings that we receive, let us give generously to our church who does so much for the community and everyone inclusively. Thank you. Would you please join me in the prayer of dedication? In the spirit of harmony and love, let us dedicate our hearts and minds to you, just as Jesus dedicated himself to your purpose. One way we do this is by offering ourselves, our lives, and our resources to be used for your work of love and truth. Bless our gifts and our actions that they may glorify your name and contribute to the unity for which Jesus prayed. Amen. Could the young and the young heart please come forward for a message for Jennifer, from Jennifer. this morning. So um, this morning I was thinking about who we are. And if I said, who are you? You might say, like I said this morning, I'm a teacher, right? So that's a little bit of who I am. Or maybe you are a student, or maybe you're a bird watcher. Or yes, Suzanne nodded enthusiastically at bird watcher. I, I caught her eye on that one, yeah. There's a lot of things that we are. Right? There's a lot of things we're interested in. There's a lot of things that we have talents about. There's a lot of things that we like to do with our time. But there's people that we are at our very cores that will never change. So right now I'm a teacher, but maybe someday I won't be. Maybe I'll retire. Or maybe I'll choose a different job. Or I don't know. I, things change all the time. Maybe you love watching birds, but you've been really waiting to see this rare something and then you see it and you're like okay well i've done all i can do here and you pick up a new hobby right all these things can happen i know so little about birds i can't even name a rare bird so i am not a bird watcher at all but maybe you'll teach me someday so um there's but there's people that we are at our absolute core that will never change and so what i brought with me today is a little um very fancy family tree. 
very fancy. My grandmother growing up had this beautiful family forest um, that one of her children had embroidered, and it was long. How long was that? Four feet, maybe. Her whole dining room wall, she had six children, and so each of her children was a tree, and it had the names of siblings and children and grandchildren, and it was beautiful. This is not as fancy as that one, um, but here's me in red. This says Jennifer, and there's me, and right up here are my parents, Cindy and Bob, and over here is my sister, Lisa, and here are my children, Jillian and Ash. So that is my very elaborate scientific family tree. Now, here's the thing. I might be a teacher for a pocket of time. I might have a hobby I enjoy for a pocket of time. Things will change. I might live in Pembroke for a pocket of time, right? I will always and forever be a daughter always and forever. This is who I will be to my parents is their daughter because we are connected forever and this is who I am. But I am not a daughter only. Also, I am a mother and I will forever be a mother to these children. No matter what circumstances in my life will change, I am both of those things. I am one person and I am both of those things. And I will forever, no matter what changes in my life, be a sister. That is who I am in my very core of who I am as a human being is a sister, no matter what changes. I am all three of those things. And it can feel confusing to think that someone can be two things at the same time. But this is true. I am all of these things. I am a mother and a daughter and a sister and forever will be. And there are other things in my core, like an auntie and maybe someday a Grammy and things like that. But these pieces of who you are, you can be both of those things at the same time. And this is true of Jesus. We're learning a lot of stories in Sunday school and hearing them here about Jesus. And Jesus was more than one thing at the same time, human and God both. And it can be really strange to think about that, but I want you to think about yourself and the pieces of who you are and who you will become and remember that possibility and that this is you too. Who you are in your core can be more than one thing, like I am in my very fancy tree here. And you all, if you want to think about who you are, could do the same and see all of your connections and who you are at your core, in your soul, who you're connected to and who you are. For me, daughter, mother, sister, and that will never change. Let's be in prayer. God, we thank you for the people that we are, the relationships we have, we thank you for the ability to be more than one thing at the same time. We thank you for the ability to be children of our parents and parents of our children. We thank you for all of the ways that our family trees intersect and the relationships we have with those in our community. And we thank you, God, today especially for all the mothers among us the mothers and stepmothers and grandmothers and aunties and family friends who mother us and foster mothers and adoptive mothers and every way that people mother other people. God, we thank you for that. Amen. You can return. join me in prayer. Light of oneness as we open the scriptures and reflect upon the words of Jesus. Illuminate our understanding and kindle within us the fire for your love. In a world where division often overshadows compassion, let your light shine through us that we may embody the oneness 
for which Christ prayed, and the beacons of your inclusive and affirming love. Amen. The scripture today is John 17, 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given, us, given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name and that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these words in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Today we gather to reflect on the profound words of John 17, 6 through 19, as read by Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. As we delve into this passage, we are invited to ponder the mystery of the incarnation, God choosing to become one of us in the life of Jesus, fully human and fully divine. Imagine a young man living in the Midwest. He lives on a farm and his parents are kind and raise him to be compassionate and loving. And he grows up and he goes to school and he goes to the big city and he becomes a journalist and he wears glasses. His name's Clark Kent. Now, Clark didn't come from here, but he doesn't want anybody to know that he didn't come from here. And so he disguises himself and becomes one of us, just a regular Joe, and not so regular, right? Until some sort of catastrophe happens and he reveals himself, except People don't really know that it's him, right? So those of you who are fans of Superman, you may not know that when in seminary, Superman is a giant, what we call a Christological figure, a hero, like in Greek mythology, human and not so human. And that's a little like Jesus, barely. I was going to give you another illustration, but that one was better because you all can identify with Superman. If you watch some of those movies, 
uh, I can't remember the one exactly which one it was. There have been so many now. But there's a scene where Superman, Clark Kent, Superman, flies up into space. And there's this, like, really kind of ridiculously obvious Christological moment where he's floating in space with his arms like this, his feet are crossed in front of each other, and his father, God, right, is telling him how fallible we are as human beings and that we're good, but we need guidance. And if you're like me and you're sitting in the movie theater, you're like, right, okay, Superman is Christ, we get it. You know, the Christ figure, the Christ figure in those movies. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. In these words, Jesus prays to God about his disciples, about us. He speaks of a divine gift, the gift of revelation and relationship. And in this prayer, Jesus unveils his divine essence in our midst, the word made flesh, dwelling among us, full of grace and truth, as John writes at the top of his version of the gospel. The Word made flesh. Let us consider for a moment the everyday experiences that mirror this divine intimacy. I was remembering this week what one of my professors wrote for an Advent sermon when I was at seminary, and I was so moved by it that I asked him for a copy of the sermon, and I've been trying to unwrap this one paragraph for 15 years. And so I'm sharing it with you so that you can help me unwrap it. Maybe we can unwrap it together. It is the nature of love to be infinitely intimate and infinitely minute. Not only to rise to the grandest and highest, but to bend to the simplest and the slightest. People say they will climb mountains, they will build cities, they will go to the moon to demonstrate their love, and they may do so. But the more reliable test is probably the willingness to make a bed, to wipe a chin, to change a diaper, to lose some sleep, or run an errand. It is true that love will brave death, but there is no higher love than that which will dare embarrassment and weakness. That the one who marks the sparrow's fall should choose to be this sparrow small. That is the revelation of Christ. I don't know what else to say after that. Like I said, I've still been unwrapping that. These moments, aren't they a reflection of the divine dwelling within and among us in every way and in every day when we have our wits about us to see it and recognize it for what it is? As we embrace our shared humanity, we might ask ourselves, what does it mean to believe that God should, should choose to become one of us? How does the life of Jesus as both fully human and fully divine transform our understanding of our own lives? In what ways are we willing to embody the love and compassion that Jesus exemplified? The scripture tells us that Jesus, though divine, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature 
of a servant. Perhaps this is the most absurdly ironic mystery that lies at the heart of our faith. The one who is the beginning and the end, the all of everything, chose to walk in dusty sandals on the roads in Galilee is a unique thing of human religious expression. In the humanity of Jesus, we find a God who weeps, a God who suffers, a God who knows both joy and sorrow, and in his divinity, we find the boundless love that redeems and heals and hollows all. As we reflect on the truth of Jesus' dual nature made one in him, let us also remember that we are called to be in the world, but not of it. We are sanctified in truth, set apart to be a beacon of hope and love in the world that yearns for the touch of the divine. As American theologian Walter Brueggemann wrote, the prophetic tasks of the church are to tell the truth in a society that lives in illusion, grieve in a society that practices denial, and express hope in a society that lives in despair. And if, we were, if it were so easy to reflect this fully human, fully divine image in the life of the church, There'd be no reason for us to be here today. There'd be no reason for the existence of religious organizations. That divine will of perfection to which God's universal church aspires is perpetually in contradiction to those whom God has gifted the church, us. We are fallible, fickle, unpredictable, messy, contradictory, self-serving creatures hewed from the soil of creation. And indeed, the great Jewish theologian Abraham Heschel was right, I think, when he wrote, and I paraphrase, thank God, God is God and I am not. Because if I were God, I would have done, with us, done away with us a long time ago. But it's like Thomas Merton wrote, and I'm, if you were at my installation and you remember this, God bless you for remembering it, first of all. But this is really kind of one of the foundational bricks in my theology. And it's from Thomas Merton when he said, he wrote, my Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it'll end nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not necessarily mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I have hope. I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. It is in this ever persistent trying, this doggedly, relentless, determined desire to keep searching and trusting in God that we believe by faith we will do better tomorrow than we did today. That is our only defense from despair. It is our only hope. And I believe by faith it is also God's. So let us go forth carrying the light of Christ within us, living out the truth of the gospel in every act of kindness, every word of comfort, and every stand for justice. For in doing so, we become living illustrations of the word made flesh, the divine dance of humanity and divinity that is the life of Jesus 
and is the church's calling. Amen. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, who has made God known to us, be with you. May the love of God, who has chosen us in truth, enfold you. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies us in unity, empower you to live in the light of Christ, now and forever. Amen.